Hello, good day, and welcome back. So today, we're going to be looking at how to encode data in JSON. Now, the data we're going to be encoding is the same data we've been playing with um, from before. Essentially, what we're going to do in this section is we're going to read data from our comma separated value file, which we know to do, and now we're going to just turn around and write it back out to another file, but this time we'll write it back out in JSON format, and you'll see we don't have to do all the hard work of trying to figure out what JSON format look like. There's a package to take just our data um, objects and just write them out. And we'll see that. So basically, the architecture of this application, if you want to think of it that way, building on what we had before is, now we have this on the left-hand side, data that um, seek comma separated value. We have the reader um, go routine, put it those lines of string, then we have the other go routine that turn those lines into person objects, put that back on a queue, and then we have this new um, go routine that's going to take those person objects and just write them out to a file. And that's basically it. All right. Now I took out the header um, function, which I still have, but that's more for testing and stuff. We can get rid of that if we like. All right. So let's jump in and take a look. Okay. So we're going to start by copying the example from before or buff IO example where we were reading from a text file. And so since we're going to be reading from a text file and writing back out to a, 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 a JSON file, let's just make sure that that works. And so what I'm going to do is pretty much take everything here from in main, because all this has to do is just opening the file, the data file, comma separated value file. We have reading the data in and printing out to the screen. So we could just stick that in a function that we're going to call like read data. And so this is what this function looks like after we've done um, creating it, moving the stuff around. And you can see the important part is really just these three lines that, like I said, open a file, read it, and then create person records from it and put it on a um, channel. The other remaining lines from 26 through 32 have to do with printing out to the screen. Now we're going to repurpose some of those lines too. Now we could really get rid of the line that print the header to the screen and so on if we don't want to see it. And basically the part that we really want is this part here that loops around and get the records off of that channel with persons. And the reason why we want that is because now we're going to take that and um, copy it to another channel. So we, for the purposes of debugging, we're going to still print it out to the screen, but then we are also going to create a channel and while we're copying it to the screen, we're going to also copy it to the other channel. So let's just see what that looks like. So that's this piece of code here, where we now wrap this in a go routine. And basically, we create a channel on 30 in that blue box. Then we wrap the function, the for loop, in a go routine in that red box. And then every time we print out um, a object that we pull out for the channel, we also copy it to the output ch channel C on line 35 in that green box. And then, of course, we would have returned when the function is called. So all this work in the Go routine is happening after the function, long after the function returns. So that takes care of us reading from the, the channel, the, the channel of person objects and processing them in terms of printing them to the screen and um, writing them to a new channel. Now, the thing we want to do is just create some variables to represent our input file and our output file. And so we do that here. After we've done that now, um, the next thing we want to do is to be able to say, well, let's use this function that we just wrote, this read data comma separated value file data function, and pass that information out to a write JSON data function. Now, if we take a look at um, the JSON um, package documentation under the encoding um, group there. Um, we'll see that there are a number of function and types, but the one we're looking for, for is the one that's called new encoder type. And that type, um, an object of that type gives you an encoding method. method. And so all you do is call the function new encoder. It gives you an encoder. And then, but of course you have to pass to it a writer. So this is all we're going to get to write out to files because we can create this encoder, which is going to be initialized with a writer. And every time we call the encode method, it's going to take whatever type of object we give it to encode and just write it out to the file for us. So 
when we go back now and implement um, our write to JSON function, it looks something like this, where we create a channel. And the reason we want to create a channel is because from our main, when we call this, we want this writer to go off and just be writing objects as it get it. But it should return a channel when it's done. So we're going to be listening to that done channel that it's going to be returned to us there. Then we, of course, want to create the file that we're going to be writing to. And so give, this gives us our file output file, which we're going to now pass to the new encode method, which is on line 39 there inside of our go routine. So we could have created the new encoder outside the go routine, but we created it inside the go routine. But basically our go routine now is going to sit there, enter launch, create a new encoder using the file to write, now it knows where to write out to, and loop around reading those person object from in, calling the encoder that encode method with those objects. That's going to be written to the file and it's doing it in a loop. When it finished reading P object, it's simply going to close the file and of course close the channel. But before it closes the channel, it's going to send and say that it's done. All we have to do now is go back to main and fix our main function so that it can wait for the right data function to finish. And then we run our program and see what all of this work has gotten us. I will see that it wouldn't work the first time. That's because we're um, in a deadlock. And the reason we're deadlocked is because when we were copying data in our read function, we never um, closed that channel. So the main program was still waiting for that channel, that data to be closed, for that channel to be closed. And now this is our output that we write to data.json file, and we can see that oh, it's properly formatted JSON um, file. So a couple of things that we had to change. We had to change for our person struct, we had to make uh, uppercase name, of course, export the, the fields in our struct because otherwise the JSON encode package wouldn't be able to encode function. It's not going to be able to go into our object to look at those value if they're private, those fields if they're private. So definitely have to change that. The second thing we had to do is create these two variables. Well, we didn't have to create those, but we created two variables to keep track of our input file name and our, of course our output file name. Um, the next thing we did was to um, modify our main, and this makes it a lot simpler in my opinion um, than what we had before. And then finally, we wrote um, this write JSON data function, which is most of our work. And as you can see, it's very little work once we have an encoder, which we create on line 45, and then you just say call it to encode on 48. So literally two lines to encode anything to JSON. All right, so that's it. Very simple. I hope you understand it. Um, look at the documentation. Um, there are some examples there. Um, take care, hit the thumbs up button, and subscribe if you're not subscribed. See you in the next video.